So we've talked about the basics of Nanomesh. Now, how do we apply some new Nanomesh functionality to something a little bit different? So we're going to go out of edit mode, hit Control N, and I'm just going to load up a character. I'm going to load up a character you can load up as well. Let's go to our tool here. We'll double click that demo soldier. Hit the comma key to get rid of our light box there. So comma key to go in the light box, comma key to get out. Drag them onto our canvas, go into edit mode here. And let's give this guy a new pair of shoulder pads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt and tap that shoulder pad. Go in here to sub tool and we're just going to say delete. We're going to give him some brand new shoulder pads. Now what I'm going to start with, I mean there's so many different ways you can make shoulder pads. Uh, but I'm just going to go through one way and you can extrapolate how to do... Uh, do multiple ways from this. So right now a lot of these meshes have subdivision history on them. Um, wristbands don't, so I could start with that, but if I want to play it safe I can take this demo soldier I can go in here to insert a poly mesh 3D. If I have that selected and go into transparent you're gonna see that poly mesh 3D is just sitting in the middle of his body. I can hit W um, and scale this down using the gizmo and just kind of put it inside his body out of the way. So I know this mesh doesn't have any subdivision history and in fact if I want to I can put this at the very top and turn off the visibility so that I can use this as a way to kind of name catch. When I go to tool save as, that'll catch the name. I can use this as something without subdivision history. So I can also do stuff like this. I can go into BTO, which is the topology brush. And I can go through here and I can just start dragging on these curves. This is something we've used throughout this series. If you want to watch the entire series, click on the description and then there's going to be a link in there to the entire playlist. So we're going to go through here and we're just going to drag on some curves and as we cross over these curves we're going to get some brand new geometry. So this is going to be the start of our new shoulder pad. So I'm going to go ahead and tap off. That'll give me a shoulder pad with some thickness. If I turn on solo you can see it's still kind of attached to that, that star there. So I'm going to go down here to our split and say split on mass points. So now we have this star sitting here and then below that we have a shoulder pad. So if I go out of solo mode here we got a shoulder pad and what I'd like to do is work on the shoulder pad in symmetry. Now you may be thinking, well you kind of can. Uh, if we go in here to transform, and if you remember from our previous videos, Z is front and back, X is side to side, Y is up and down. So what we can do is we can go in here to transform, activate symmetry in the Z direction, turn off X. We can also go in here to geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld, turn off X, turn on Z. And if we turn on this local symmetry, this will be a local axis, so we can actually click mirror and weld. And now, as we go through and sculpt on this or move these things around, we can work in symmetry along this axis. And that works okay for shoulder pads. However, a lot of times, if I'm in the shoulder pad here, it's like, well, it's kind of perfectly straight. What if the shoulder pad needs to go back a little bit and kind of over here? You may think, well, okay, fine. Maybe you just fudge it and work uh, off axis just a tiny bit. Well, what if you're doing something like an elbow pad? So if I drag this out, let me rotate this around here. There is no axis of symmetry that I have available in ZBrush to go through here and like work in symmetry across this axis here. That's just a, that's just an axis that goes that way not going to work. So I'm going to show you a way where you can have symmetrical working in symmetry and also have it applied to an, uh, an arbitrary axis. So what I mean by that is, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the shoulder pad we had here. I'm going to go down here and you don't have to do this part, you don't have to unify it. I just like to work uh, with this thing right in the middle of my world here. We're going to turn off our floor and we're going to go out of perspective mode. So we basically unified this right in the middle of our world, our shoulder pad here. Uh, with our floor plane turned on, you can see Z is forward. So I'm going to rotate this shoulder pad. I'm going to go to Unmesh Mesh Center. I'm going to rotate it. And if you need to, turn off X symmetry. So you can rotate this around. And if I turn on my floor plane with Z on, you can see here's that midline right down the middle. So if I go in here to Geometry, Modify Topology, Mirror and Weld across the x-axis left to right, now we have symmetry in this x-axis. If I want to get rid of that sliver I can actually just scooch that over just a little bit, do a mirror and weld, um, turn off local sim, and that'll go ahead and get rid of that. Now I can turn on x-symmetry, and you gotta go in here to transform, make sure you turn x-symmetry back on and turn off z-symmetry. And now we have a shoulder pad. So we can turn off our floor, we're in x-symmetry, we can go through here and we can say uh, with our z-modeler brush, hover over a face, q-mesh, polygroup ball, hold down shift to push along those surface normals, Maybe go in here to crease PG. Maybe go in here to dynamic subdiv, turn on dynamic. 
sorry, crease PG, we can do like a crease level of two, maybe turn on a smooth sedative of three, get a nice smooth result. The problem is I can work in symmetry here, but when I go out of solo mode, it's just in the middle of his body here. So I don't know what it's going to look like over here. I can try doing an array mesh and kind of putting it over there, but that gets really complicated. I'm going to show you a really easy way to get this shoulder pad up here onto both of his shoulders and actually use it for elbow pads and knee pads too.